Okay, um, in the last video, we were discussing underdetermined systems, that is, these situations where we have more equations than there are variables. And we had, for example, um, three equations, but five variables. And we asked ourselves, is there a solution to this set of equations? And we went ahead, set up the augmented matrix, and when we got it in its final form, it was like this. And when we got to this stage, that's when we introduced the concept of lead variables and free variables. Now, the variables that correspond to the first non-zero elements in each row, those are the lead variables. So over here it would be x1. For this row, it would be x4. For this row, it would be x5. So x1, x4, and x5 are the lead variables. The variables that are left over, in this case x2 and x3, the leftover variables, so to speak, are the free variables, and they're called free because these can assume any value whatsoever. And as we saw in the last video then, that means that you can have an infinite number of solutions. So with an underdetermined system, you either have no solution. For example, we might have a whole row of zeros here and a non-zero number here, in which case there is no solution. Or it's going to be in a form like this, where you're going to have some lead variables, but the ones that are left over, the free variables can have any value whatsoever, so you can have an infinite number of solutions. And when you have an underdetermined system where you have more rows, or where you have more columns than you have rows, here we have three rows and five columns, that means at most we can only have three lead variables. Here they are. So you know there's going to be some variables left over x2 and x3, so you know you're going to have some free variables. So you're going to have an infinite number of solutions, or no solution at all. Now, this is with an undetermined system. What happens if we have a matrix like we had in our very first video, where we had three equations and three unknowns? We had a square matrix. Here we had an m by n matrix. m is the number of rows n is the number of columns, and there's more columns than there are rows. Therefore, there's going to be some free variables in the system, and there's going to be an infinite number of solutions. Either that, or we're going to have a situation where there's zeros all the way across, and a non-zero element there, and there won't be any solution. But what about, let's say we have a square matrix. like this one. Here we have five rows and five columns. So this would be an augmented matrix then where we have five equations and five different variables. x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. Okay, and let's say we want to try to solve that. So we're going along. We want this to be zero. So all we have to do is just add the first row to it to make that 0. And that gives us this set of numbers right here. And we can also eliminate these two as we go along. But the important point right now is this. When we're adding this first row to the second row to make this 0, notice that this comes out 0 too. That's important because this is a diagonal. Here we have a square matrix. So this, 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 those are diagonal elements. And remember when we were doing the Gaussian elimination or the uh, echelon row process as we demonstrated in the earlier videos, um, the strategy was 
start here, try to make all these zero, then start here with this diagonal element, make everything else underneath it zero, and keep going like that. Well, when we were making this zero, this diagonal element came out to be zero. If you have a square matrix and you're using the Gaussian elimination, while you're doing that, if one of the diagonal elements comes out to be zero, like it did here, you're guaranteed when you get down to the final step, you're going to have at least one set of one row of zero elements. In this case, we had two row of zero elements. Now, for this particular problem, it's okay because we have zeros here. So that means it has a solution. Now, if one of these had a non-zero number here, then there'd be no solution. But we have zeros here, so there's still a solution to it. But there's not going to be a unique solution. Because we look at it and say, well, okay, x1 is a lead variable. Here we see that x3 is a lead variable. And we and also here, x5 is a lead variable. So that means that x2 and x4 are free variables. These can assume any value whatsoever. And as you saw in the last video, when we solve this, we're going to have some of these free variables, or excuse me, some of these lead variables expressed in terms of the free variables. And the free variables can assume any value at all. So therefore, you're back to where you have an infinite number of solutions. So what this means is that if you have a square matrix and you go ahead and you're using the row echelon method or the Gaussian elimination. Um, and while you're doing that, if one of the diagonal elements comes out to be zero, as it did here, you're guaranteed that you're going to have at least one row of complete zeros, maybe more. Here we had two. Well, now, that means either there's going to be no solution whatsoever because these might have a non-zero number here, or there's going to be an infinite number of solutions because the free variables are going to pop up here. And usually it's the latter case. So when we have a square matrix, this would be an n by n square matrix. And you go ahead and you're trying to get it and use the row echelon technique. While you're doing that, if one of the diagonal elements comes out to be zero, you're going to have free variables, and there will be no unique solution. There will be an infinite number of solutions. And those kind of square matrices are called singular. If, on the other hand, none of these none of the diagonal elements come out to be zero, then you will have a unique solution, and that's non-singular. So here, no unique solution. Just like an underdetermined system. Free variables will crop up. Here, we do have unique solutions, a unique solution. And again, these are uh, square matrices. These would be n by n square matrices. And again, what will happen if it's a singular square matrix when you're using the Gaussian elimination or the row echelon uh, technique, along the way, one of these diagonal elements is going to come out to be zero while you're trying to do your eliminations. And you know then you're going to have free variables because if that happens, 
you're going to have at least one set of zero elements for a complete row, maybe more. And that means you're going to have free variables, therefore no unique solution. With a non-singular matrix, the diagonal elements will never be zero and you will always get a unique solution. And we'll examine that um, more carefully in, in our future videos. We want to point out then that this concept of lead variables and free variables, we're going to use it over and over again. And you'll see it come cropping up more and more often um, in the future videos. Now since this has a unique solution, a non-singular matrix It has, this is non-singular, it has unique solution and a non-singular matrix, and again we'll talk about square matrices, will also have an inverse so that you multiply by its inverse we get the identity matrix. And exactly how you multiply matrices and what the identity matrix is, we're going to examine that not in the next video, but in the one after. Um, so come back and join us for those videos. We'll continue our discussion. Uh, right now, we just wanted to point out to you the importance of lead variables, and free variables, and they have more consequences too, and we'll examine those in future videos. So come back, uh, join us for those videos, and we'll continue our discussions.